two, uh, two presentations this morning. Um, the first one is um, uh, by Sophie Kohler from Ben Gurion University. And the text we were reading and uh, the presentation is The Murder of a Travel Companion, Violence, Gender, and Living Conditions of Servants in 18th Century Prussia. And then we'll transition about an hour uh, to, to uh, to Johanan, um, am I open? Francesca Brecoli, to Johanan for, uh, for a presentation on exorcism and violence, context internal and external. So, okay, floor is yours. <laughs> okay. So, um, the text that I'm presenting today um, was taken from, from a file which was put together by the Prussian authorities, um, and it contains legal documents. Okay, co covering uh, the the uh, the whole case um, against um, the Jewish male servant Samuel, who um, was found to have murdered. It was a manslaughter. Um, the Jewish woman, the uh, maid servant Sila, in uh, 1791. So it was a homicide. It went straight to the German, to the Prussian authorities. The, the Jewish, we have almost no voice from the Jewish community here. Can you speak up? Okay. <laughs> now this document has been um, sleeping on my computer for a long, long time. Um, it was my my late teacher and and also thesis advisor Bob Liebelis, uh who found it actually. And um, what w and I was his uh, scientific assistant, and we were working on on Alltagsgeschichte, everyday life history, and uh, violence was clearly a part of of the story, as we have seen. Violence was everywhere, and so this is how th this document came into my my um, possession. So first of all, I want to introduce this document to you. Um, the file, what it contains, what, what is in. Then I'd like to deconstruct the, the account of the of Samuel, the one that you read. And then I want to I try to put it into the social context of what do we know about servants, male servants, female servants, and and, and in that time in Prussia. Now this is what the document looks like. Hang on, which. And you've all seen this before. I mean, they all look the same, right? You have the title page, and the, the other one is the first page. And you can actually read it. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, that is what it looks like. And, and, um, and when I was looking for a specific Polish place name that comes up on the net, I saw it has been published before. Now, that was quite a shock, but it is actually interesting. This is where it has been published. It has been published in 793. Now the case, as I was saying, the murder happened in 1791. And the, the book it is published in is called Annalen der Rechtsgeschichte. That is the, the, the Annals of Legislation. And it lists the, the, the specific case. It has several court cases in it. And it lists this spe specific case in a chapter called Curious Law Cases. OK, that's from pages uh, 47 to 101. You can read it a little bit. Um, now, the, this book went into print before the court case was over. The, the, the editor writes in his uh, preface, he explains why, why did he choose to put this case in. And, and, and he says he wanted to highlight the, the, the accuracy and the, and the uh, particular attention that the regional court uh, uh, paid to the laws. So there was some kind of, of propaganda, you know, putting this in. And, and, and that made me think of Yair. Uh, sometimes you have these, uh, uh, these long court cases. It is some kind of also trying to prove your, your expertise. Um, the, the printed text ends in, in, in November 92, 
And um, at that point, Samui was um, convicted of murder, and he was sentenced to death by sword. And afterwards, his dead body was to be broken on the wheel. Okay. Now, I don't want to put you in suspense. The, 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 the real document that we have from the archive uh, ends in October 93. And um, in the meantime, a lot of things happened. They put more files piled up. For example, there's a petition by his father. That's the only other Jewish, or the only, only Jewish voice that we have is the petition by the father, uh, which was not successful, by the way. Um, and then we have another report by the regional court in Kustrin, um, that, which actually wanted to uphold the, the death sentence. And then we have the highest um, uh, court of uh, appeal in Berlin, which pleaded for a lifelong prison sentence because it says the case is not at all clear. So here goes the accuracy, okay? But still, the king first upheld the death sentence, and then in October 93, <coughs> uh, a week after, after he himself well, it's not he himself, it's his, but signs with his name that, uh, uh, signed in his name that um, the death sentence is being upheld, changes his mind and says, well, I have reservations about this. Let's, um, let's uh, uh, commute this to a lifelong prison sentence. Okay, the document covers, as I said, the time from 1791 until 1793 and, and, and 114 sheets of paper, which is not at all like what we have heard yesterday, but it, but it goes to show how much um, there was back and forth also between the uh, courts. So obviously, I only copied a very small excerpt. So and they think that, that um, a series of documents of the trials of murder are shorter in this period in Prussia from what you may have seen? Or is it typical to have 100 and whatever pages of documents? And that length of a trial, a trial is much more. That is not such an easy um, question to answer because we don't always have, it's very rare that you have a court case from the beginning to the end. Okay, because sometimes it breaks up in the middle and sometimes you're not sure you have an ending, but, you're, but you can't be sure that it really is the ending. You have to um, remember that the, the, a lot of the stuff that is in, in, in the Prussian, in the archive in Dahlem, um, survived the war, mm -hmm. had been transferred to the east of Germany, had tra been transferred to the west, the rest that was still there. So there was a lot of damage done. But all this red, red tape was a sign of the time, definitely. They really, um, really tried to produce a lot, a lot of back and forth and, and so on, because that was their way of showing how co competent. And so on. That is not <coughs> The murder cases or other cases by Christians were usually very sort of swift and ended quickly. So that's mm. Mm, well, I don't think there's so much of a difference. Okay, so so if you're interested in what the in the parts of the documents, it's um, it's a report by the regional court. Um, which, which states, by the way, that the investigation started the very next day. And they were proud of that because you, they, they usually someone got, gets arrested and then he has to wait. And he's just uh, arrested and, and, and that's it. And there's no one to ensure him to, to, that he will be out soon or something. So, and this is also what happens here. Although the investigation starts the next day, um, he himself is being questioned in the Spezial Inquisition only in January, that is four months later. And, um, and then for some reason, for almost a year, the, the, the investigation into this case stops because they, are, they, they claim themselves they are, um, uh, uh, they are delayed for administrative reasons. There must be Exactly, there was a war or something, something or oh, establishing, yeah. So, and nothing happened, and this guy is arrested. And then, 
and then it is taken up again in, uh, in August 92. So between uh, January um, when that J January August 91 and August 92, there's nothing going on. Um, so we have a short summary, what happened. Then we have a six-page summary of the Spezial Inquisition, of this questioning. We have questions and we have answers. Um, but part of it, part of it is in first form, but part of it is just a summary, and, and it goes to third form. He said that, and then you have a summary. And then what is also interesting is we have the autopsy of the dead body, and that is only something for people with steady nerves that is so awful, because <laughs> um, just to make it sure, this woman has two wounds. She's, she got stabbed under her left arm, and one well, I would call it a slash right over the belly and all the intestines hanging out and, she, and, the, and the head was black and they, for um, several um, times over the investigation, it was uh, speculated if he also strangled her and that is something that he always denied and, and, but it comes up at several places. Was she actually pregnant? <laughs> I come to that later, okay, but, the, the, but she wasn't. Um, he, he, first he confesses and, um, that she, first he confesses that he murdered her with stabbing her with two, uh, t twice. And it's interesting what he stabbed her with is it was the, the, the knife he was carrying around. So you didn't necessarily have to have to carry a sword around. And, and, and obviously, he, 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 needed, he always calls it his bread knife, and obviously you would need a, I would think, you would need at least a knife to carry around with. And what is interesting, now I'm jumping, so I might say this twice, but um, he, later on he, he retracts his confession, and, she, uh, and he, he says, well, she also carried a knife, and he wants to insinuate that maybe she afflicted the wounds to herself, and, and yes, she was also carrying a knife, she carried a smaller than his, but she also carried a knife. Um, so so uh, the, 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 the summing up how, how um, the events happened, and, um, and he retracts. And, and, it, and it's interesting that um, he said, well, the first confession was done because he was afraid of torture. And he, and he, and he tells how he gets arrested and being put into the local inn and all these people come by. There are peasants with clubs that threaten him. And there are, um, then there's this miller apprentice who is wondering who swears at him. And there's some um, local official who also threatens him with a, with a stick. And there's a Jew, Abraham, who tells him to confess. Other, otherwise, um, it, w it will end very badly because you will be tortured. And that's interesting because torture had been abolished 40 years before. But it was, unless he's lying, but even though it was plausible enough to, to, to say it, you know, so therefore um, that torture was still very much in, in, in the heads of the, of the people who got arrested. And anyway, so along this case, I was, several times I was asking myself, it really matters how it exactly happens of it's not enough how plausible things were yeah. for, for, for us historians, of course. And then, as I said, we had re the, um, uh, re the higher court, the, the summary why the higher court of appeal didn't accept the, the death sentence and so on. Well, they were ma mainly arguing why didn't they want this death sentence. You needed, y in order to, s since torture had been, um, abolished, what did you need to, to, to um, implement a death sentence? You needed two witnesses, and that's interesting again because two witnesses, it doesn't, I don't think it, 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 it I don't think it is important whether they are Jews or not. Um, and, or you needed a confession, and he with retracts his confession, so they don't have this confession anymore. So that might be why in the, why in the end, he gets the lifelong uh, prison sentence. The, 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 the higher court, the highest court of appeal in Berlin argues that um, 
that the people from the regional court were asking leading questions. And so that was misleading, you know. <laughs> and and they and that the wound was not prob probably properly measured, um, that the autopsy report isn't um, um, exact enough, and, um, and, and that his confession was forced because people threatened him. So these were their major concerns. Um, and and the, the file contains a short part which I left out and, and now I feel sorry about it, and I want to tell you because so many interesting things came up in this forum that I think it does not distract us as I thought it would. But, um, but I think, for example, A. Schlepper might have something to say about it, but also people from Poland that now I've already asked Magda about it. He tells his life story uh, before, you know, the, the, the file starts with, uh, he comes from Birnbahn, by the way, because I always get lost, I just want to show you where where things are. This is many what happened. Now, Neumark, the, the, where it all happens, is you see the dark blue is um, uh, Brandenburg, and the Neumark is the, this arm that is sticking out that in light blue. Oh, this is how it is today. Now, this is where we are. I just, because the place names are now Polish, um, and I always, I was going back and forth, like where we are today, I also have this. Uh, uh, if, if anyone is interested and knows his way around better in this uh, um, map, but let's stick to, to that one so we know what we're talking about. When he tells this story, when he was seven years old, he was abducted by a Polish nobleman called Ganowski, yeah, or something like it, <laughs> um, when he was taking a walk um, um, at a lake, and he was taken to a place that he didn't know, and later on, he was taken to a, a different place. Um, and 10 weeks later, he was, he was brought to Polish Neustadt. Now, there's another thing that I want to say. In this uh, uh, document, it says, for example, a Polish woman, a Polish nobleman, uh, a Polish Jewess, the Polish Neustadt. And I was wondering whether it's him saying that or whether the, the guy who wrote it down uh, did that. Because it's a very interesting thing whether Jews um, made this distinction, and, I t and I'll tell you why later on. Okay, um, so he's being caught and, the, and, and then taken to another Polish nobleman, and I have the name here, okay. He was given lessons in Catholicism, and then he was baptized, and, um, the, and, and, and he stayed on this estate, and, he, and it says there he learned to work and to pray, and, and he was even made so it, it goes, uh, he won us from estate to estate, but mainly um, he, he became, in the end, he became the supervisor of, the, of this Polish estate. He was really um, somebody there, and he really learned his work. Now, he, he also states that um, he's being asked, yeah, he met his parents over that time, and the parents even rented a distillery from this, the same landlord he, of, of his. But then in the end he becomes sick and he is ta he's been taken to Neustadt for treatment. Now, where is the, this is, this is Birnbaum, this is where he was born. This is then later on in Neustadt, uh, where he's being taken because he's sick. And then he, he was, um, he wasn't feeling better. They couldn't do anything about him, so they took him back to Birnbaum, where he was born. The, the people in Birnbaum also couldn't help him, so he was being taken to Driesen, which is up there somewhere. It's not on the map, it must be somewhere over here. And then the relatives, in, he had relatives there, they sent him to, um, to Friedeberg, which is about, like, we are talking about around t between 20 and 30 kilometers each time, okay? And, the, and from Friesen, he went to his brother Hirsch Saul to Berlin. Now, at there he earned his teaching, um, uh, he learned his living as a teacher and so on. Now, you probably all noticed that, and he states it explicitly. The, the minute he crosses the border to Prussia, he uh, goes back to Ju Judaism. There's no, no big deal about it. So now you know, also, yeah? Um, how, do you, how probable do you think is this story about the conversion and him being... <laughs> I asked. Magda about it. How yeah. probable is this? Because I don't know anything about Polish. You know, this is what was I done in Poland. 
issue, but yeah. Well, it's his narrative. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's his narrative. There are stories. It's not unheard. Right. Yeah, but, no, but, but, it's, but it's, it's, it may have been but that his parents sent him to service to the nobleman, and maybe or may not. Uh, but yeah. what the question is, what purpose it would serve in right. terms of helping his case? Uh, to have been a lapsed Christian is worse than to have been a Jew all along. So why would he have a motive to but claim he that it was true? Yeah, he was Catholic. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, and to be honest, I mean, I, I skip here, like, in, in, inside my document, but um, it's interesting because this never comes up again. But in the end, when he uh, when he's um, sentenced to death, he's not being asked if he wants to convert. Now he probably has lost it. You know, he was not. This, so he doesn't know whether he dies as a Christian or he dies as a Jew. Oh, I. It's very difficult because you try not to follow him in his narrative, but I very much had the feeling, but that could be my projection, that he was just a Jew and that's it, and that we shouldn't take conversions as seriously as we usually do. But this is a very shaky case, you know, to, for this theory. I, I still just wonder if you could speculate what purpose it would serve. If he was simply a Jew, why claim to have been baptized? What possible use could that have been? Okay, now my explanation that might be wild, mm -hmm. but I think he's talking to Prussian authorities and by the time he's telling this case, this part is no longer Polish. And there might be something of, something like, I don't think, I, I think he's like siding with the Prussians over the Polish. Th that was what I was thinking, but I w I'm so open for you to explain this because it's, it's it, why would he why would he tell the story? Did they check for the baptism? Because no, but he's. No, it doesn't. The, 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 of course, there was a register of the baptism. So if you say I am baptized, someone could check that uh, it is. Well, they, the Prussians, didn't yeah. check at all. But he ta but he um, gives the names and the and the places, so they could check. They could. Mm -hmm. but they didn't. Yeah. And I didn't because I wouldn't. This is also what I asked Martin. How do you, what do you do about this? So I don't think he was taken over the border. But he was born in Russia or in Poland? In Poland. He's a Polish Jew. His parents are Polish. Then he got abducted. Then he was, he stayed in Poland as a Catholic. His parents worked for the same landlord. It must have been some, something position. friendly. She's yeah. Born with yeah. Yeah. And then She's yeah, 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 right here. And the case, so he's uh, born in he's see, this is the border. Just then, the first petition. In late 60, 61 or uh, 69 no. or 68. No, 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 no. And then the border moves and he finds himself. No, 91 and he's 22 or 23. Yeah, once he's 20. Right? Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 absolutely. Yeah, this is why I put the, you see, and, and that this is also what makes the case so interesting. It's, um, it's all in, the, in this border area, and they can, um, they could play with that. The, this, the, we, must, we must keep in mind that, okay, let's, we have different possibilities. We can say the whole story is being made up, and we can think about why. I mean, the one of the conversion, I mean, now. But we can also say that the borders at the time when, it was, when he was still young, there was still this, this border, um, also, also um, it was also a possi uh, an opportunity for Jews. First of all, when you think of how he tells his story, um, he's talking about all these places with all his relatives. So obviously he has a network of, fa of, of, of family uh, members that d doesn't care about the border, they're in Prussia and they're, they're in Poland. So for him there's this Jewish space. You know, and this, po this border is a political border between Prussia and Poland. Okay. And he can use it, just, just okay. a second, if we, t if we take him by his word with the conversion, then he can use the border for like going over to the next territory and that was it, be, being free to be a Jew again. Yeah, that's what yeah, The border gaps and the clearly has that uh, function for him because he, 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 he certainly did it in Poland, he'd be committing capital offense. Not at this time. No. 
not in 79, no, already uh, abolished in late 70, 79. But it was. In terms, in terms of the Jewish space, there, we, we have a memoir. Exactly. Yeah, we, we have a memoir from a, from a Jew that this period lived in this region, and he's very clear on the, diff the cultural differences between the German side and the Polish side. He knows the difference. It's not a single space age. You move to Germany, ah. they speak differently, they have different customs, you treat it differently. So it's, it's slightly more complicated. Yeah, we, well, I was, I was getting to the language, and no, but he does treat it as a, as a, a Jewish space in the, in the way of that he's, he's being um, transported to or going from Jewish place to Jewish place. He's saying when he was ill, um, from relative to community oh. and so on. That, that makes it Jewish. But it, what is also interesting is um, that he speaks, I mean, we didn't seem to notice, but he speaks German to the Prussian authorities. He speaks Polish. I mean, he speaks Polish, obviously, to the, to the Polish. And I, I suppose he speaks Yiddish. So he's traveling around. He does have, it, there's no, for him, there's no border for, there's no language. So the border actually is really only for political reasons. This is why I thought that, um, um, that, that he would just, he's telling the story because he, because he's siding with the Prussians against the Poles. Is, is there, when, uh, when his testimony is uh, transcribed or rescribed or whatever it is, uh, is there a difference in, um, can, you, can you hear the linguistic difference? In Polish sources you can't. The no, Jews can't. are speaking in, in Polish court sources in Polish the same way as non-grammatical, but not only yeah. had grammatical language at the time. Um, in England, in the Old Bailey's, for instance, they do transcribe Jewish testimonies as sort of, uh, you know, distorted English. So there is mm -hmm. a distinct uh, way, the way it's transcribed. Is there something like that going no, on? No, unfortunately mm -hmm. not. It's just, why, why did I say that? Because, oh, with Yiddish, because um, when, you, when you have something, it's not this case. When you have a legal court case that has been taken from a legal archive, it's German. And, and, and also, he said that, or he said, Direct quote, it's, it's all direct. high German, it's, everything's high German, unfortunately. But if you have, you know, the, if you have um, ego documents or something and they are written in Hebrew letters, then it, then it is a different, then it's not necessarily high German. This is why I suppose that this is how he spoke. But anyway, Polish and German, he spoke that, these languages. So it's very interesting here what, what, what kind of um, the, the, the meaning of the border uh, uh, here. Anyhow, the question is, uh, uh, at, the first, at first sight, we might think that this case was really thoroughly researched. And certainly, they thought this was thoroughly, research, uh, thoroughly um, documented, this court case. Um, even before the highest court of appeal said, no, this case is shaky and, and, and these are the points why, even before that, their, the, the, the perception of at least this Prussian, uh, uh, Prussian uh, scholar of uh, legislation, whatever, um, uh, uh, thought that it was a well, um, well, um, you know, well done case. But um, if you come to look uh, at the report, then first of all, we don't know how much knowledge the doctors had at the time. And um, so today, we might say, OK, the, the head was black, but that is not necessarily because, of the, because he was strangled. Um, we can't really say today what really happened, even with our knowledge, and if we read this again, even if we were a doc doctors and read this again, according to the description. Um, and so, for example, for example, what you just asked, was she pregnant? Now, they found she wasn't pregnant, which is, which is interesting enough because why does she tell him she is pregnant when they both know that they didn't have any intercourse? You know, that she's talk, telling all the world that she's pregnant, that is in order to pressure him, but why would she say that 
to him. So maybe when the autopsy report says he, she's not pregnant, maybe they just didn't, you know, they didn't have the means to see that in the early stages. Well, she's said to be a hussy who hoard around with a guy, so her honor is, is gone. Exactly. So she might be, she doesn't want the money from him, but she wants her reputation to be uh, restored and she wants him to marry, at least according to this account. Right, and this is extremely interesting. I just want to say, I just want to do, I just want to break the whole thing up and say, okay, we don't know, we don't know. We can't even follow the autopsy report because I'm, I don't, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm quite sure that at the time they couldn't see the very early stages of, of pregnancy. They probably couldn't detect it either. Why, I'm not so sure think, if they, Why do you think it's early? Well, because I suppose the later ones they could, but maybe they couldn't, you know. What I was just going to say was that it could be that because we have only his report and the autopsy report, why couldn't it be that he, um, that he strangled her and stabbed her out of, like, violence? The pure violence or whatever. He brings her sexuality into the case. He talks about her as the one who has sexual relations with guys. Maybe he raped her, or maybe that was his fantasy. Like what we hear today on the television, we wouldn't. This we wouldn't know. We can only only follow what he's saying. You see. Hmm? You said that the file is over a hundred pages. Mm -hmm. I mean, in this material. Did the court try to seek some witnesses? I mean, not necessarily to what happened, but to the circumstances, I meaning her lifestyle, you know, whatever. N no, and well, yes and no. Um, uh, they're bringing about people who saw how he get a, got arrested, and they see, uh, they see and ask people who saw that they were traveling together, and at a certain point didn't travel together anymore because she was lying dead in the, in the she, she's been found in the border ditch, I forgot to, to mention that border ditch between two villages. Um, so they're not trying to establish whether she was a, a, a person of good uh, standing. Because often in the courts you would have this, that one of the most important things is to establish whether the party in the court had a you know, Latin bona fama, bona fama yeah. good standing or not. It's a very important part of it. No, they, um, he says, at, at a certain point, the only thing he says is that the, she's a Polish Jew who came came ragged and 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 whatever, a poor, and she wasn't. Uh, she claimed she was from some place that I forgot it now, Polish something, and I, I can t look it up later. And um, but other uh, and and but other people say that it's not true. They don't know her. Can I, can I just ask you to yeah. clarify the role of this document in relation to the other documents that mm -hmm. were? This, what is this exactly? This is a report that is supposed to, because it's in the third person, is it, is it just giving us his testimony yeah. in the third person? Yeah, Always. no, yeah. I mean, it's being written down in the, but sometimes, sometimes in the interrogation it even switches. Yeah. He, question, answer, and all of a sudden he says that and then there comes this report and then it's. Because this, you know, it's, it's a narrative. Also. Yeah. Absolutely, and but in narratives, they have different kinds of reports, and it more or less stays the same, except for that once, at the very beginning, when he's a being asked the, f the first time after he right after he was threatened, um, that he um, killed her with two, uh, twice he stabbed her twice, and then later on he retracts and he says something that we we would call we would say today. I was so traumatized by her behavior and the fact that she ran into my knife. This is what he says. He says, this is what happened. She ran into my knife and about the second wound, I'm so traumatized, I can't remember. Yeah. No, no, but I'm asking about this. This, this one is a, a, it's taken from the, from the regional court and they, they are summing up what he said for the... Okay. So this is a summary of what he said yeah. in front of the regional Yeah, and... and, and which, which um, time in the chronology is it in the beginning? But I was struck by that he just said, oh, it was an accident, she fell into my knife. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's not a very good argumentation. If you know that her belly was cut open, yeah. he said, I didn't see any blood. So I was wondering which was. There was later. That was you after he reached. Yeah, no blood. Yeah, yeah, there was no blood. Is yeah, it, yeah, there is it, it not very convincing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There was, there was some, that is uh, in the, 
Yeah, I think this is part of it's sometimes very difficult to put the dates, um, b but it's I would say now it's part of the um, interrogation in um, in uh, January, like four months later, where he retracts. January yeah. Okay. But I'd rather have a look afterwards again. We look it up again. Um, but it's, he retracts. It's okay. yeah. Can I ask, can I ask you to? I mean, to step back and, and just reflect a little bit more about this, this issue of, of forgetting and the Rashomon uh, like nature of, of, of acts of violence. Uh, uh, I mean, we have different accounts of, of events in all kinds of cases, right? I mean, it, it's, it's not unusual in history, right? It's what we deal with. Is this something, in your opinion, positively different here that makes it harder to get to the truth than in any other country? Good question. You are asking that is, 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 is this something unusual that he says, I forgot everything, I retract the um, confession? Is that what but you're it's asking? something more difficult, I guess, even more, even more like zooming out. It, it's just something about acts of violence that makes it, I mean, we Bernie mentioned it, I think, at first, and, and Bob, too. It's something about acts of violence specifically that makes it difficult to know what really happened. Or is this just something that we, we deal with yeah. in stories all the time? The house of violence is very contemporary to what happened at that time. I think what we. I think fiction in the archives. Absolutely. Is, uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a given. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, know. yeah. you never know. I think this is why I think what we should do is to see what was plausible enough for the others to to accept. You know, if, you, if they say something and you see the others, how they react, was it something that they. Believe so we get a better picture. Yeah, but, uh, I want to get to Tila, yeah, yeah, but uh, that, that's my very good question mm -hmm. because what in, in the case I you know I didn't reach all of it yesterday, you have the positions, you have the inquisitio, but in the end, the court in the in the in the, in the sentence provides a reconstruction of, of what happened. Mm -hmm. So what it says is it's so that's what happened in the beginning, yeah. then blah blah blah, and then in the end, so he sentenced. Do you have something like this that in the end of this trial? The court provides a, 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 a reconstruction of what happened and then passes it down. Oh, and to justify its sentence, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. The, 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 yeah. yeah. the legal term is the relax. Yeah, relax. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I do have like short, first of all, I have um, short summaries of what had happened in between. And then also what they're doing is they're summing the case up. They're saying, for example, is this the knife that you have murdered her with? Also, this is what the, the highest court of appeal calls then later on leading questions because they already put everything, their narrative, into the question. And then he, he says, well, yeah, so, or so I didn't do it. Or but, but the sentence, do you have actually in the sentence, mm -hmm. do you have, is the sentence just he is guilty, therefore he is, uh, he is uh, sentenced to this and that? Yeah. Or you have a sentence meaning, that's what happened. That's why he is guilty, and that's that. You know that the, that that's what he's uh, sentenced to. Do you have a uh, reconstruction of events by the court as summary? Yeah, okay. as a summary okay. of the. Of the of but you said you wanted to get to Sarah, and I want to get to her too. Because <laughs> even if there is a summary, it still doesn't get us any closer to the truth. Is that the closer to the courts? To the courts, so the courts mm -hmm. summing up and 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 the um and the tension between the two courts, but. Uh, mm -hmm. What they didn't notice, and, and that is the, the strangest thing that I think in the entire document, not the murder, not whatever, the fact that the court accepts that she, um, he always claimed, well, she wanted me to marry her, or we went to there and there because she wanted me to marry her. There is no way he could marry her. No way he wasn't a protected Jew, protection Jew. You, if you didn't have a letter of protection, you couldn't marry. You really couldn't. And as a maid, and even, and he has none that I know for certain because it is a legal term and he would have been called Schutzjude and not Jude. Jude Samuel Kacha um, Bakacha. But he's, he, would, he would have been a Schutzjude. And that we know for certain that he wasn't. And also, at the way I know the, how these things work, usually, even if he had, you could. As a servant, that was a very mobile thing to be. You weren't a servant all your life, usually. I mean, it was a stage in your life. And sometimes you really could get a 
a letter of protection. But even if that was in the making, that it would have been in the file, and it's not. And that is, I, I think, one of the strangest things. They don't focus on CLA at all. Can, can, mm -hmm. I, uh, can we just look at the document? Yeah. On page two or three. And if we look at it as a narrative, yeah. okay, so forget what happened, what didn't happen. I'm just interested in how he positions himself mm -hmm. in relation to her. And what I find very intriguing is that he's obviously trying to portray himself as the innocent mm -hmm. party. Mm -hmm. She's portrayed as a very nasty woman. Uh, but what I don't understand, and he keeps saying that he's ashamed of being with her, I don't understand why in the narrative he's saying, you know, in order to avoid publicity, he went with her to the loft, very offered her everything. He had his money, his shirt, his watch. I, 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 yeah, he I guess what I'm trying to say is, can we just try and, and unpack he the way he, he talks about this encounter and the way he talks about it? In other words, he's not simply a manservant who mm -hmm. collects the hay. And, and yeah. 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 This is a, a, a man on the make. He, he's, he's on his way up in the world. He's apprenticing mm -hmm. himself to very yeah. well known, very well positioned people. Mm -hmm. And then this woman, um, who's clearly an embarrassment because she's loud and quarrelsome, uh, tries to glom onto him. There's a relationship between them. He, 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 he tries to play it down in the text. Yeah, well it's absolutely clear that there's some so serious relationship between these two people. That's how I read it. And she drags him to the knowledge of society. He may not have started there, but she pulls a Yeah, she pulls yeah. it. The, the, but but Still. he goes with her. I mean, he, he didn't have to go. I'm sure well, he didn't exactly. have to go That's, that's what puzzles me in the text, right? So why does he have to... Because, because she wants to settle it while we're in a relationship with her. Because of her, you could no longer stay with his employer. Why don't you just get rid of her? She's yeah, just a so servant. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. There are plenty of ways he could have got rid of her, sure. So his best strategy to defend himself what? is to say, I will shame. Yeah. Right. All these strategies. Yeah. Right? Well, and I try my best. Maybe, but he... I don't know. I don't think so. It was usually on the then on the on the woman, and this is the point I want to get to. Just let me run through, and I'm like very interested in this um, in this discussion because uh, uh, about servants we know far too little. Far too little. It's a serious um, desideratum of. Um, of scholarly research, and there has there is this um, unpublished um, um, dissertation by um, Tani Shimshi Licht, who is a uh, who is uh, um, uh, wrote it in uh, Ben Gurion University on Jewish servants and maid, maids in early modern uh, Germany, and which is an important first step. I mean. And then uh, uh, on the, about the living conditions of uh, servants in that area and in that time. And, then, and, and Monica uh, Richards is currently working on a project on uh, Jewish maid servants. Um, and she has so, fa uh, so far published only a short essay. And I have the title here if you want to know. Then. Um, but we, we have to keep in mind if when we um, evaluate our, our um, murder slash manslaughter case here, um, that th th there's a methodological problem, bless you, that uh, w what we do know about female uh, 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 servants is when, when they get into some kind of trouble, then we hear about them. So we hear about them in the courts, uh, uh, when they, when ev whatever they did unlawful, they either went to the, into the Takanon or something, um, or it went to the um, authorities, and then we hear about it. And so, also at the time, it, it, these these maid servants they were stigmatized. Okay, but then again, it was not for 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 nothing because we have to picture the situation um, in Prussia, for example, when you were born uh, a child of of uh, protected Jews, 
then you had to show that you own 1,000 Reichstaler in order to get a letter of protection. Like 1,000 Reichstaler, that's such a great amount of money. And the second child would even have to have, uh, it depended on the time, but uh, even more. But so, and, and people, you know, if you have more children, then what do they do? The, the, once they can't stay in the house of their parents anymore, or they're like, so grown up, then when they're grown up, they can even petition if they can work as maids or servants in their parents' house, for example. So, um, but they also go, they go out and they either have to leave the country, that could be quite close sometimes, you know, from, from Prussia to Poland, for example, or the other way around or whatever. But um, that, that, is, that means wandering and, and trying to, to find as is the case here, this is why I left all the place names in, and then I went from here to there and from there to there, and always trying um, to find a place to stay. Now, for, for men it was hard, but for women, we, we, we get an idea. She is wondering, and she has a male companion. So walking on your own was clearly something extremely dangerous, and sh so she's walking, I mean, maybe that's the reason why she was walking with him, a fellow Jew. And um, well, she has one night. This is all she has, you know. And uh, and she's wandering the street. So, so the, the, these women were um, were uh, in uh, in danger. Okay. And, and 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 many Jewish maids became pregnant on the road or in the houses of their land landlords. And then many of them, I have seen so many files where they just killed the baby. And by the way, it was probably not for nothing that in Prussia, and that's not only for Jews, that's for everyone, it was, um, it was um, forbidden to hide your pregnancy for obvious reasons. Okay. Yeah. Um, did she, I mean, what you've given us is a fantastic picture of the, the, a, a maidservant in Germany. Is that exactly the, the, what she is? Isn't she somebody, a, a wandering Jew, who gets employment serving in a tavern yeah. rather than being someone as a, as a professional maidservant. Oh yeah, but it, it was very mobile. It was very also not only mobile that way, but also you know she could find um, a, a better position and she could stay longer in the house and and then she could be a real help and and like yeah that was. Uh, but in the end, sh she would have to marry, and then we come back to our case. So, um, and for example, just think of the of the uh, the problems with halacha with yichud. I mean, she stays with him. She has to when they're walking around, they have to stay overnight. They stay together in this barn yard. Now we know far too little on wandering maidservants how they manage their daily lives. Okay. And, 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 and by the way, I, I just noticed, I just throw this out. I, again, the, the, the thing about space, I mean, there's this open space. It's actually public. It's like everyone can see them. But in the end, also, no one sees them. And there are border ditches, and no one sees, and, and a murder can happen. So it's, it's, it, it's sometimes it's wide open, but it's still very intimate. Um, so I, I think that we just don't know and can't reconstruct how, how she really lost her life. But I think that at this case comes at least to illustrate these dire living conditions and, and, and the dangers of everyday life. And, and it actually reminds us of the fact that, the, that this um, ideal family life that we, that we know from, from uh, Glickel, that was a very rare um, privilege among Prussian Jews at the time. Okay, now I <laughs> we have time for this question. I think you've gone some way to dispel some of my uh, um, confusion, but it's not the confusion about the case. I mean, what, why are we interested in this as historians today? Uh, what, what can you derive from a single case? Isn't it always the nuclear web episode in one case? No. Um, how, mm -hmm. how do we deal with this? I mean, so. so it, in some ways, some historians might say, well, you know, the unusual gives us a, a peephole into the normal. But that has to be explained, and I don't see how this No, I think that. it's the opposite. It's, this is the normal. 
Well, how I do you establish that? Why should we believe you? The no, it, I have the floor. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> why? why how, how do we? How do we deal with this? I think that we can. Well, for normal, you need a lot of documents. Well, which you probably have read. But. Well, very little has been done uh, quantitatively on on Prussian Jews. Very little, and it, and it's it's a shame. That's true. I mean, we're at the very very beginning, and um, that is partly f um, because of the fact that the that the archive was only uh, holding this material. This kind of court materials was only. Um, um, brought back to Berlin in 2000, you see. So there's like work going on, but it's, it's still in the beginning stages. Now, um, many historians still, uh, uh, when they, especially on da daily life, um, go, start with Glickel. You know, Glickel was late for memories. And, and I think these court cases are a way to, um, to counterbalance and to, to see, okay, when we have memoirs, you have a certain way of speaking, and we have to deconstruct these legal documents too. And, that's, and I hope that's w what I did. We, don't, we didn't take every word, but we have to seriously discuss these cases in order to show. And they, they do give us a glimpse into what was really going on. And now you can say, you can argue, okay, the life of the ordinary people is not enough interesting, but I think we first have to see exactly what is going on on the ground before we can say that. And for that, we need all these uh, these cases and, and, and um, female servants. And I'm so glad that uh, Monica Richards is working on this now because um, it, it was a very dangerous life. And we need these cases to show it. And there are, there are more child murder cases among the Jewish community that, than I'd ever thought. And, and I think it's very important to know, and it's not so much on the margin, the, you know, the, the servants. They were, they were there, they were there everywhere. I mean, it, it, it just, just, one, one, just to raise a question, I mean, the question of the documents once again, and one way of, of, of looking at this is, and I, I take Elisheva's point very seriously, that it's, it, it's a general problem, it's fiction in the archives. Mm -hmm. Um, perhaps there's something about violence itself, the, the violent aspect of it that makes it more difficult to remember. But there's another argument out there, talking about big uh, conceptual, work, mm -hmm. conceptual works about violence. And then it's a bureaucracy itself, this is Aaron's argument, right? A bureaucracy itself brings violence. Yes, the paperwork itself is, is, is a form of violence. And it I, I, just, I just wonder if you have anything to say about that. Or is this, uh, or are we just trying to understand this? You see, well, I, I learned a, a million things from just this one document. Mm -hmm. For example, what they ate and drank. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, that's not something they're going to make up. Um, at least it's plausible to know. Uh, notice that he's eating fish, he's having coffee, he's having butter and beer. He's not eating anything unkosher, even though there were probably no kosher no restaurants, <laughs> no burning to order in from, mm -hmm. from the local place. Um, there, there are um, many, many um, details here about the texture of daily life in the lower classes mm -hmm. that I would never know had I not read this. Mm -hmm. And that, for me at least, um, is not the, you know, the question of the crime itself is something we can't address beyond, beyond the statements that are given. But there's such a richness of, of um, creating a picture of their lives here, uh, that to me is what you can learn from even one case. And then when you read case after case after case, you can begin to put together a sense of the texture of lives that we would otherwise have no window into. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. so there's a lot here. Yeah, are. and also I think what they, um, the, the points, you're interested in red tape, and, and it's very interesting. Also, the points that they're missing, that the court, you know, the questions that are missing, for example, what is the, how can, can it be? Um, that's also very interesting because it, it shows their, their, their world and how little female maid servants, what little role they played, for example. But it's, it's, it's a, not, I don't think it's just a female maid servants. I think it's generally people on the margins of the society 
if you have if you have uh, you know male uh, you know thieves or murder murderers you I mean I I read in my cases I also see that you know there is not much the court is not often interested in this kind of uh, in, you know stuff it, it, I don't think it's only about the females I think generally the people people on the margins are not treated always as seriously and thoroughly as we might uh, we might think. <laughs> no, I was just saying that we sometimes have also to, to question the, 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 the term on the margin, because who's on the margin here? I mean, so many people are really on the road, and we get a picture of what they're doing. They're going from here to there, the, the um, distances they're covering. We get a little glimpse on the network, and so on. So, you know, maybe the, 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 the protected Jews, if we just look at the numbers, then they, at least they are the minority, so. But we have to also remember this is a case of a murder where the woman is dead and you have not interested in her. Yeah, they are interested in him, the murderer, yeah. um, and if they are investigating and any witnesses, it will be about him, not necessarily checking whether she was uh, a hussy or not, because that doesn't mean that that justifies the murder. There is a dead body. So, so again, the nature of a legal document, and, and it, that's where we, we don't see them. I mean, we're talking about the perpetrators are not given a voice, although here is the alleged perpetrator that is supposedly <laughs> given some voice. Um, but the victims usually don't, uh, don't have that unless mm -hmm. they are not dead. So, um, so again, we, don't, we hear it only through this me mediated um, form, and, and Sheva is right, there's a lot um, to learn from it. But again, we shouldn't be expecting that there would be an investigation of her because that's not on trial. I, I would also mention one other thing in terms of her motive, uh, which is that if she even suspected that she was pregnant, she would have absolutely no life. Uh, she could not be employed anymore as a servant if she were a single woman pregnant out of wedlock. Absolutely. And therefore, she, she you know, even if she wasn't actually pregnant but thought she might be, uh, okay. she would be mm -hmm. absolutely desperate yeah. to be married at that point mm -hmm. before it showed. Yeah, before, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was always, always talking about the very early stages, but yeah, even the suspicion, of course. I, I think it might be worth looking at the chronology that it, it isn't really the very early stages, at least no. because she, she claims to be pregnant by him so she must have, she must be at least, to make even that claim, she must be at least four weeks pregnant or so, should we say, I mean a month? You have to miss a month, right? So, and then six or seven weeks later, she, she tracks him down and finds him. So we're talking in three months. After Ooh. drinking some coffee, maybe it was very strong coffee. Maybe it was very strong <laughs> coffee, but my feeling is that she's probably three months pregnant, so she's not. The, so, so you say she's not pregnant, or not? But but it's not because like it's the very early stage. By the time I don't yeah, know if she would start to show. Okay, I missed that point. Yeah, by three months she would probably. Well, the, what I think is that know. the autopsy report would. That I don't know. I would have to ask someone who knows. Right, but the autopsy probably just describes the state of her body. It didn't do dissection, it didn't, right? It didn't do it because. Right, because no. the, the pregnancy, the, the, in 1714, I believe, in Leipzig, and there are a lot of those kind of manuals. There was a manual spe especially published for OB, uh, GYN type of uh, uh, care, and there are, um, there are illustrations of the no. early uh, fetuses. Yes. So it's not like they knew only the high, higher, uh, later. So they knew it. The they question is whether the, uh, there was a dissection, and I don't think that was part of the the, the um, process. The dissections were in medical schools, but not necessarily in the court. So the autopsy is only dealing with what's this? What's this? The, yeah, the yeah. Especially as they complain that it has not been done thoroughly, they're saying they didn't introduce a something to measure the deep depth of the wound and so on. Would it be a, a, a higher crime if he had no. stabbed a woman with a fetus? No. I don't think so. I don't know for sure, but I don't think so. Also, child murder, they usually get like four years or so. It's interesting <laughs> that 
the violent one in the portrayal, apart yeah. from the actual act of murdering her, she does the act. She's one of the three that's actually being violent. She's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's portrayed. She is the perpetrator. The, she is, she's violent. She causes trauma to him. Right. It's her violent behavior that brings about the whole situation. That's what I would try to, to say, say by deconstructing the case. He portrays her as the perpetrator. He yeah. brought her. Well, he forces, she forces him to kill her. Uh, yeah. yeah, she forces herself onto him, and therefore he is a killer. Yeah. yeah. Just because, uh, uh, at one moment in the document, there is a uh, quotation of another woman who was traveling with the yeah. victim. In any part of the trial, did this woman or some other woman describe, or yes. was only men's voice in this trial? Uh, no, we have also along uh, women that say, uh, we saw these two together. But yeah. I thought that they are, I think they are Christian. But here, yeah, yeah that women and men, they, they are. They can uh, give testimony. Okay, and on that note, it's time to